future AI overlords, you may have seen or heard about Microsoft and all of its incredible work around AI. You may also have uh, seen the Microsoft Surface products um, that they've been building for years and they're incredible. My favorite laptop is a Microsoft Surface Book and I was really bummed that they aren't building that anymore. Um, they're evolving into a Surface Studio uh, which uh, you know they, they announced. But anyway, they had a, an event that typically is a Microsoft Surface event in the fall where they announced new hardware, and they did announce new hardware. But it feels like Microsoft AI came in and just took over the whole darn presentation. So it was kind of exciting and kind of surprising. And, you know, it, um, Panos Panay, who I love, who has been the driver of the Surface line, uh, is leaving Microsoft. He announced his resignation this week, and it was really kind of surprising, to be honest. Um, but anyway, he has such a strong vision, and um, I, I hear he's going to Amazon, which is cool. Uh, but anyway, um, the event this week was primarily focused on AI, so I am so stoked to talk about it, and uh, let's just get going. So this was initially planned to be a Surface event, but basically became a hybrid event to talk about new hardware and new software and services and update to Windows, which is great. And it was very AI-centric. So I'm super excited. Now, I actually have migrated off of the Windows um, uh, platform as my primary platform. I typically use the Mac today, but um, as I've been hearing about Copilot and Windows, I've been like, ooh, like this looks really cool. Um, you know, this, this whole AI thing is just, you know, 10 month mind blown emoji. I feel like I can't, you know, um, you know, just can't express the excitement and incredible energy around it. Um, but anyway, maybe some of you are familiar with this logo. Um, it's the Cortana logo, and I was a big fan of Cortana. Um, I've used Siri because I'm an iPhone user. I've used Google Assistant because I'm a Pixel user. I also use the Google Home products, um, and uh, I have used Cortana. And Cortana, you know, is kind of faded into the oblivion. Um, but I think it's a predecessor for some of these new experiences that we're going to be seeing sort of like the promise of Cortana is now kind of coming through all this great AI powered uh, technology. So I, I thought it was kind of interesting how um, in some of the experiences you can almost see hints of Cortana inside it. So I thought that was really kind of cool. I, I'm a big uh, Xbox person, or I was really a big Xbox person, love playing Halo. Cortana is a part of that experience. So I really, um, uh, you know, kind of enjoyed the whole Cortana experience. So anyway, but um, you may have seen this new logo. So Microsoft came out with a new logo for its Copilot. It was using the Office logo. And so they're transitioning to this cool new logo. Um, it's very colorful and graphical, and it's meant to represent a handshake between the human and the AI, which is, it makes sense. And I, I really like it. You know, it's a Copilot, which is a great way to think about how AIs can help us in everyday life, work, home, school, wherever you're at. Uh, but anyway, so they announced Copilot earlier this year, and the vision was to empower every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more. Satya Nadella is such a wonderful speaker, and I always love hearing him present at these events. But he talked about Copilot, he talked about Microsoft's mission, and this just continues their mission to empower people and organizations. So this is wonderful. I love that mission. But um, the thing that was so exciting was when they talked about Copilot from Windows and they talked about what that's gonna look like. And that to me was really exciting. The idea of when I boot into Windows, I have a Windows, I have a Copilot for Windows that is integrated into the operating system and I can use that. I mean, it was like amazing. So as I'm using apps and tools on the Windows device, 
there may or may not be different levels of integration. Of course, and we've talked in the past about Microsoft is bringing Copilot into all their most used applications, and that's amazing. So to what degree this branches beyond just the OS into other apps? They've kind of demoed plugins into other tools like from Adobe and stuff like that. But, um, and we've talked about Copilot being integrated into Microsoft 365. You know, so the Excel, the Word, the Teams, you know, we, we already have it um, integrated into Bing, um, into the Edge browser. So bringing Copilot into Windows is amazing. So you'll have this Copilot logo, um, you know, right there, um, you know, front and center, you know, um, in the taskbar to see uh, and, and, and immediately launch and summon uh, with your voice, summon with a click. Um, it's really exciting. You know, to think that, you know, uh, Copilot will be that all that intelligence uh, and, that's, and this is that uh, OpenAI GPT-4 um, and also Project Prometheus from Microsoft and bringing that intelligence and that security and stuff into the Windows operating system. So it looks really cool. So imagine you're, you know, you're, you're, you're looking at some content. So and you just with a click of a button can rewrite or have uh, uh, an explanation given around something you're looking in a web browser or summarize a lot of content that you're viewing with just a couple clicks. It's amazing. Um, and then giving you the power to have that voice. Like I, I love voice interaction. This feels very Star Trek, you know, kind of experience. And, and the assistance that we got with Alexa and with Google Assistant and Siri and all that is, have been really amazing. And it's exciting to think that now we're going to see not just basic kind of like um, entry level assistance, we're going to see really complex uh, assistants that understand our intent, can help us, and they understand the context of what we are actually doing, um, whether it's work or home or play and devices we're on and the things we're looking at. So that is really exciting. I know that kind of creeps some people out, and I, and I get that, um, you know, but uh, the, the the work that, that Microsoft is doing around putting privacy bubbles around their tools is significant. So, um, you know, but definitely still something to, to, to think about. So they were showing how in paint, how it was using AI to, you know, basically blur backgrounds. You know, um, it was kind of amazing. Um, they were showing um, how to actually um, co-create, um, you know, and, and update graphics and tools inside of the, the, the paint application, even the snipping tool is getting some AI capability. Um, you know, inside of, you know, the, the, the operating system, instead of having to search for that, how to switch to dark mode. I love dark mode everywhere. So this will likely be the first thing I turn on as I tell it, you know, turn on dark mode, um, you know, but just having that ability to just conversationally make changes to your operating system uh, you know, f feels amazing getting it to go into work mode, play music, you know, all that kind of stuff that it takes several clicks to do it. And now it's just a couple words and boom, it's happening. It's kind of exciting. So, so, but doing, bringing in that capability to summarize, explain and rewrite documents and web pages and content, making it so that it doesn't feel uh, like you're having to hop into a chat bot, hop into this chat bot, hop into this application. It'll just, those tools will be right there available um, on the toolbar right inside of Windows to, to, to get up and running. So like even your, if you're on, on, um, in a document, having the ability to draft, you know, some more detailed information inside that document. Um, getting that, like I know for me, creating content sometimes is hard you know, putting that first word to page or looking at a bunch of information and just kind of being overwhelmed by it. Um, and, you know, I've used a lot of the Microsoft tools. Like I like to, you know, to do the read aloud feature a lot. Um, and I use that a lot in Outlook to have emails read to me and stuff like that. But having emails like those gigantic, huge emails summarized with key points and stuff, um, you know, you can do that in advance of reading the entire email, then read it and get a level of detail that you would have got, wouldn't have gotten it just through a simple, you know, one, one, a one pass reading. I mean, we don't have enough time in our day to do a lot, to do a lot of the work that we're currently doing. So if we can make, if we can use these tools to make the way we work easier and smarter, it's really exciting. 
you know, but they were showing how, you know, inside these tools, you could remove backgrounds. Some of these things that we're starting to do on our mobile devices, which is really incredible, but now they're bringing that into the Windows operating system. Um, or you get, you know, recommendations on, you know, things to visit, you know, when you're, when you're at a location. Imagine turning those recommendations into actionable itinerary with just a few interactions with Copilot. It can surface up the content, make it relevant to you, you know, um, put it in the context of something that you want to do based on the time, uh, the, your mode of transportation, things like that. It's really exciting to think that we can go from just information to actionable knowledge in a couple clicks or a couple sentences. Um, so September 26th is just a few days away. I am super excited. I actually ordered a new Surface laptop because I wanted to get uh, a new device that I knew would support this uh, update. And I believe that this is part of just the Windows 11 upgrade process. So uh, be looking on it for looking out for it to show up on September 26. I will be jumping into it and immediately uh, playing with it and seeing what it what it can do, what it can't do. Uh, like all of these AI tools, they're evolving. Um, so. Even if it can't do something today, tomorrow it will likely do something you know new, and in the future do something that we never imagined. You know, um, so it's really exciting to see how Copilot will come to Windows. Now we still have Edge and Bing and Copilot, so they're going to be rebranding that and bringing you know kind of enhancing that experience. Um, they're bringing Dolly three, so OpenAI announced Dolly three, and they're bringing that into Bing Image Creator which is really great. The, the images you can create in Dolly 3 versus Dolly 2 are pretty amazing. The photorealism um, is pretty astounding, you know, uh, but I, I'm a big fan of, of Dolly and I use Bing Image Creator quite a bit, um, but it's a, it's, a great, it's a great tool and it's, and it's amazing to see these tools just get better and better with new releases and versions. And one other thing I thought was really cool is that they're going to cryptographically tag uh, images created by AI. So it'll have this uh, content credential to say generated with AI. I know that Google is doing this as well. So I think this is great that when we're looking for images and we want to know, hey, was this generated by an AI? Um, that will help us a great deal. And I, hopefully will make people more comfortable with these AI tools that they can be identified. Uh, which I think is very important. Um, one of the things they also talked a lot about was context. So bringing context and creating a, basically a unified personalized experience with these co-pilots. So um, right now, you know, a lot of the, like the Bing chat conversations, you could have 30 interactions and then it basically forgets what you're doing. What they're looking to do is keep some of that context, some of that knowledge about you, your likes and dislikes and things like that, so that it can give you answers based on your personalized preferences, which I think is fantastic, or give you personalized answers in the context of, I'm in New York City, I'm gonna, I wanna do X, Y, Z, and it gives you, uh, you know, answers around, it knows that you're, you need to, you know, you need, you're, you're traveling there, you know, walking around and, you know, you're, you, you want to visit certain, you know, museums and, and things like that. So giving you that context, you know, um, when we do searches for things and you get that 1 million results in, in, one, in, in 0.7, you know, seconds is astounding and that's incredible. But turning all that into meaningful, actionable uh, activities that you can do things with is, is a different story. And, and I didn't realize this, but uh, they're saying that like half of uh, half of searches to look up information, uh, people never get to the answer they were looking for, um, and I don't know you know like what's really behind that, but that was a stat that was brought up uh, this week, and I was just really kind of shocked by it, um, and I want to dive and learn a little bit more about where that came from and what that's about, but but getting to the answer, I know for myself since these you know since. Um, you know, the, the launch of this, this new era at the end of last year, these new chatbots, I get answers and that's why I use them over typical search tools. Um, now I do love being able to like in Google Bard, for instance, clicking the G icon and launching into a Google search to validate content. That is great. And I love that. Um, 
Now they announced also Microsoft 365 Copilot will be available um, on November 1st. Um, now they also announced Microsoft 365 Chat. Uh, you know, like when you when you build stuff using AI, the Outlook sounds like me. It can actually change, um, you know, the the um, AI generated content into the way you talk and write and things like that. So I think bringing your personal voice into the AI is really cool. And then Microsoft Designer, which is great. I've used it, uh, you know, a few times, and and I really I really like it. But I think integrating these tools and then Copilot Lab looks amazing. Copilot Lab is all about giving you uh, knowledge around prompts, how to, how to make good prompts better, how to, uh, what prompts are kind of available, sharing prompts with your, with, you know, with your coworkers. So, I mean, like this, this 365 Copilot is just evolving so quickly. Um, and I know that that is another point that kind of overwhelms people is the, the keeping up with all this technology and changes is really hard. And I think this is one of those things where you know, as we move into this new era of AI, getting into it is the hard part. Getting, and then once you're in it and you have the basics, using these AI tools to keep up with it, I think will be better. And I think this vision where they say, hey, you know, when you think about, you know, could I, you know, could I, you know, what would happen if you didn't have Google search? You know, what would happen if you didn't have a smartphone? You know, I mean, that it will, these personal assistants that are like kind of next generation assistants, um, are going to help us in ways that we can't even comprehend. And it, so it's very exciting, you know, but I know it's a little scary. Uh, but the Microsoft 365 Copilot is focused on Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, and Teams, and adding that Copilot function, functionality in those tools is going to be coming on November 1st, general, uh, general availability, uh, depending on, you know, your company and, and whether they're going to be paying, you know, that, that uh, $30 per user per month, which sounds really expensive, but it's, it's really exciting to think about uh, these co-pilots being integrated into the tool, having all that organizational knowledge, being able to grab data from the internet and connect the dots to integrate, you know, the, those kind of questions and stuff. Um, it's it's really exciting. You're having that like organizational knowledge um, brought into your environment. Now, of course, prepping your knowledge base um, and your information, your work environment, so you've got good knowledge to be used will be critical and you know there's a whole onboarding process for this but anyway um, but that whole thing like we ask so many questions in our daily lives um, of the things we do the projects we're working on the people we work with the status of things timelines you know what you know what can this can what can or can't this do where are we at with this that or the other kind of thing so there's so many things but imagine having all that at the tip of your fingers real time um, and they, sh they were showing Microsoft 365 chat. So this is um, where this connects into your organizational data. Um, this lets you, you know, uh, so this is an app specific to Copilot outside of the Copilot integrated in Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. So this is more of a standalone. But when you think about all the emails, all the documents you receive, all the information you've captured in OneNote, all the SharePoint libraries, you know, the constant information that exists and new information that's created daily from meetings and projects and plans and, you know, I mean, things that are documented. I mean, it's, it's a lot of information. It's a lot of stuff to, to keep on top of. And to be honest, it feels almost impossible to do that. But having a co-pilot that can comb through that information and surface it up, we've been seeing that those kind of behaviors inside of Microsoft 365 already, um, where it can remind you of tasks, or it can say, hey, this document might be relevant to the meeting you're having today. You know, so they've been doing this in small but significant ways, and now that is just getting turbocharged with the, uh, uh, the co-pilot and these AI tools. Um, so the questions that we ask, the status of things, all this kind of stuff, imagine being able to get to that through natural language, through a, you know, entering text in your Copilot tool and getting all that connected information out of the different resources and stuff you have access to and making it easily accessible to create new documents, to plan things, to see where stuff is at. Um, and and uh, you know, it's, it's a next level, next generation 
capabilities that I know is overwhelming for people, but I know it's going to take us to an incredible new level of productivity and capability, focusing your, your energies around innovation and creativity and stuff like that, that um, I think, um, you know, it's going to change the way we work which is great, hopefully remove a lot of mundane tasks, um, give us access to information that's more accurate, um, help us move forward on things faster, uh, think about how we work uh, a little bit more intentionally, where we're not so caught up in you know, building and creating content and stuff like that. Like I'm a, I'm a big, uh, you know, when, th when I have to recreate information that exists somewhere else, that's a huge annoyance. I mean, aside from, you know, printing documents, which I wish people would do a lot less of, and I know they are doing a lot less of, but anyway, save the trees. Um, but when you're recreating information that exists already somewhere, that is annoying. But they announced Copilot Lab, which I thought is really cool. And this is that prompt uh, piece. How do you ask the questions? What are the possibilities with these interactions? I think that's something that people really need is, a way to understand what can I ask these things? It's sort of the question behind the question. You know, like, um, you know, people don't sometimes know where to begin, what to ask, what's even possible. And I feel like Copilot Lab is going to show you some of that. And not only will it show you that, it's going to be a place where you can create prompts and share prompts and, and find new prompts and elevate your prompts in, in exciting new ways. So I am very excited. Um, what they announced this week, what I, what I thought was a surface event, became this huge AI event, and they talked about hardware and software and services and the transformation that Microsoft is going through. Um, but its goal to really give us an AI companion for work, for personal life, um, in the context of uh, you know, different uh, experiences that we're having on different devices in different contexts. It's amazing. I mean, this is a paradigm shift beyond anything. Um, getting these chatbots is amazing. The integration of them into our lives, into the tools we use, the hardware, software, and services is going to continue. And I know that's overwhelming for people, but um, it's important, I think, for all of us to just learn the basics and be open to change and you know start simple you're used to starting with google search or bing search just switch your search into an ai chatbot um, simple personal questions start there but learn those interactions and learn what's possible so that when your work environment adds these ai capabilities you'll have some good context and understanding of what's possible and then flip the switches for work mode and how this can make your life better. So anyway, um, I am so excited about this. Um, literally September 26th is just a few days away. Uh, I can't wait till my Surface laptop comes in and I'm gonna get it all set up and ready for that Windows 11 update. Um, and then uh, I'll, I'll be back to share my experience and hopefully um, uh, many of you will have upgraded too and found cool new ways uh, to use AI. So uh, thank you for joining me. Have a great day.